Our last speaker of this morning session is uh, Professor Xi Jin from Jiao uh, Tong University in Shanghai. And she will speak about uh, random batch method for interacting particle systems. Yes. First, I'd like to apologize for the change of the topic. Uh, I, I gave the same topic in the previous workshop, but it's almost a completely different topic. So maybe there's one. But there's also one in audience who heard the other talk, so. <laughs> Sorry, you can't go along. Uh, I saw this is more relevant for this audience. So. All right, so it's a. Uh, all right, so it's uh, some regional work as did uh, this a colleague, young colleague uh, in Shanghai, Jiaotong, a lady, who was uh, did his uh, PhD in Wisconsin, then post up the. Uh, Jiang uh, Liu, he's a professor at Duke University. Uh, all right, so particle system is something we all know, know about. It's uh, something we arise uh, everywhere. I mean, this is basically Newton's second law. dx dt equals v and dv dt, which uh, assume mass is one, so dv dt is acceleration equals the force. And here, the force is due to the interactions between particles. So each particle, Xi will interact with all the other particles. Uh, another, so this is second order system. Uh, we, we also, I will most concentrate on first order system, which is this uh, sort of a long one equation, but with the interacting potentials. Uh, you can, so here, this uh, ground V is the external potential. And I have interacting potential where each particle will interact with all the other particles. And we may also add some noise here. Uh, so sigma is stress of noise. So the idea we talk about actually works for both first order and second order systems. But I will mainly focus, at least the analysis will focus on, on the first, first order system. So about applications, it's uh, everywhere, you can imagine. So I think if you do computation, it's throughout your career, at least uh, with high probability, you will deal with this kind of system, at least once. And so for such a fundamental equation. In physics and the chemistry, we do molecular dynamics, uh, electrostatics, uh, in astrophysics, where if you consider stars, galaxies, and like particles. Uh, in the last uh, one or two decades, there's an emerging field called uh, in biology, called uh, collective behavior of uh, individuals, uh, flocking, swarming, chemotaxis, and so on, and social science, the wealth distributions, opinion dynamics pedestrians, and so on. You can also write some uh, models from data science, for, for example, clusterings, as a particle system. Not to mention that the uh, particle method is also a numerical method to solve a lot of uh, PDEs, for example, kinetic equations, mean field equations, and so on. So essentially, it, it, it I mean, arises everywhere. So I saw these slides from Pierre Emmanuel Japan. The, the, the key word is uh, how large is n here. And it can be too large for us to, to, to handle. For example, in cosmology as astrophysics, n can be like 10 to 20 to 10 to 25. You can simulate dark matters, is more part 10 to 60. All right? In plasmas, typically n is from 10 to 20 to 10 to 25. For numeric particle method, very, uh, very often we are required to do like 10 to 9 to 10 to 12. In biology, it's uh, 10 to 6 to 10 to 12. Other applications in social science are a little smaller than this three. But on the other hand, if n is really large, sometimes uh, under certain conditions, you can uh, take a, a mean field limit by sending n to infinity. Uh, the way to do that is the, you introduce the empirical measure. All right, so you just uh, take uh, this uh, Dirac mass of all the particles and take average. And if n goes to infinity, assume uh, molecular chaos, all the particles are identical. No, it's uh, indistinguishable. And under certain assumptions on the external potential and the interacting potentials, the marginal distribution of uh, this empirical measure can be proved to converge uh, to this uh, full Planck equation. And this, this term comes from the external potential. The interacting potential gives it this uh, convolution, and the uh, noise term uh, gives it this diffusion term. So, main issue here when you do computation is the cost. All right. If you look at the equation here, 
And for each particle, you have to add n terms to interact with all the other particles. So in one time step, if you solve this only in one time step, it's all the n, but you have uh, all each particle is all the n, you have n particles, all the n squared. Alright, so that's the main cost. For for this uh, n is so large, and n squared is just it's too much. Of course, this famous work that adjusts this issue, for example, fast multiple method. Alright, it's a very complicated problem, it's a very powerful method. It's one of the top ten algorithms in the last century. But it's very hard to implement. And here we're going to introduce another method, which is very simple. I mean, if it's beginning program, it takes probably half hour to program it. Extremely simple. Two lines of code. But it reduces the cost from all the n to any power. If you have a binary interaction n squared, if you have more than binaries n to any power, some j, where j can be 3 or 4, whatever. No, no matter what j is, we reduce complexity to all the, n, all the n in a very simple fashion. And it's for general interaction potentials. All right. So the algorithm is so simple is that it can be embarrassing to talk about it. You can take just two lines. All right. I hope you understand and remember and can program at home. Just spend half hour we can program this. So the idea is at every time step, we have n particles. We just do a random uh, random uh, shuffling. Alright? It, it divides n particles in a random way to small, little n groups. And each group has only lit p particles. p is much, much smaller than n. p is all the one. In particular, you can choose p to be 2, which means each group has just two particles. All right? Then you only interact with your own group, within your own group. It's very much, you imagine that tonight we have a dancing party and everyone has to dance with the other one. So what you can do is just uh, you run pick up a partner you dance with this person. At the end of the song, you run pick up another one. After some time, you have dance. Everyone has dance with the rest. Okay? Same principle. Very simple. This is the code. If you take a picture of this, go back home, I'm sure you finish the coding in half an hour. Alright? So this is what you do. Suppose that's your time step power. Alright? So after, so we have done it uh, n time steps. Now this is your next time step. Two line of code. First, you do a random sh uh, shuffling of uh, these n particles. Alright? Divide them into n groups. Each group has p particles. Then you, if you already have a code, you want to change one term. You replace this n term summation into p term summation. That's it. Okay. And you only interact with your own group. So I promise you can finish the time. You're coding half an hour, maybe even less. And it's all the n. The first step of random reshuffling is all the n. There's already algorithm developed in the 70s. And if you, if you use MATLAB, this is something you use for the random permutation. Just call that code. All right? It's all the n. This operation is all the n. Of course, uh, the OD step is all the n because uh, you add only p terms here. p is, can be 2, 3, 4. You know, it's all the one. So clearly it's all the n. So uh, all, all cost per time step is all the n. How do you choose the batches? Random. Random mm -hmm. shuffle. Okay. Very random. The uni uniform. So the whole work completed the per time step we created over the end. Alright? I promise it's very simple. It's indeed it cannot be simple. So there are different ways to do it actually. The first one is random reshuffling. The second one is I have n particles, I just draw a p particles, let them interact, then put it back, then draw another p particles. Okay, let them interact, put it back. I draw it little n times. Then I'm finishing with one time step. So this is called a visual replacement. So with this way, of course, some particles may have done more than once, and you miss some particles. But you know, average, statistically, everyone gets a white chance. So the same, same idea. But this implementation is a little more parallel. I mean, it's, uh, so the implementation of this is a little more, uh, it's a little bit better. But the numerical outcome is similar. You can also forget about time. Just draw p particles, let them interact, put it back, 
and join up people and move on. So you know, that's what called a second version of a RPM with the person. Um, the key issue here is well, clearly we reduce computational cost by all n. The question is, do you need a smaller time step? This part, if the time you dance with one person, that take a longer time, so you dance with everyone. All right, it may take a little bit longer time. However, the key is that the time step is independent of n. So your communicate cost is reduced by all of n, but your time step is not reduced by all of n. All right, so that's the key. And we're going to prove it for at least a special example of quantum financial k. All right. Another bonus, if you, each group has only two particles, and if you do cooler interaction, if you do cooler with the other one, this part can be solved analytically. When you do time splitting, you do cooler with one particle, and usually coolant potential is uh, singular. You have one divided by x minus y, but x and y close, uh, you know, the time step is very, very small and similar. It's very stiff. But if you can solve it analytically, of course, there's no stiffness. All right. mm -hmm. So that's the actual bonus. If you only take p equal to each, each part has two groups. So how did we get this idea? <laughs> then I can put at least two relevant ideas. The so first one, actually, that's where we got. You know, the, nowadays, this puzzling world is machine learning. Everybody wants to do machine learning. And I'm sure if you talk to young people, they want to learn scientific computing. Half of them want to learn machine learning. All right? In machine learning, the most popular Algorithm, something called a stochastic gradient descent method. All right. So in machine learning, what you try to do is you try to minimize a loss function, and the loss function is a summation of uh, many many functions, may not be convex, very high dimension, lots of parameters, millions of parameters. So if you do gradient descent, the, the gradient taking the great derivative, the gradient is very costly. So what people do there is you randomly select a few directions, few functions. You only take gradient descent along those few mini, mini batches, but it's random, randomly selected. All right, so that's, there are two bonuses. Why is of course you save to complete the cost? The other one, usually when you have a non-convex minimization, a standard deterministic algorithm may get trapped into local minimum. Then you get stuck there. It's actual stochasticity by choosing the mini batch and some noise, which allow you with a larger probability to get out of the local equilibrium. So it convert, has a better convergence to the toward global equilibrium. And you can even compute this active time, active probability, which is the stochastic algorithm. Well, another similar idea, of course, if you are from this community, you know this is direct simulation Monte Carlo, forcing by birth, and uh, Sasha also made fundamental conclusions that our, our algorithm is uh, somehow similar we write the, write the algorithm similar to the nan post version. Of course, here, physically, there are binary collisions. You do binary collisions, all right? But in our case, you have an n-body interaction. But you're still doing binary. And there's also another work uh, due to uh, LP and the Peresky, where they do this mean field. They write the mean field flocking model, some kind of flocking equation, also use a similar idea as nan post algorithm using random binary, which also works. All right, so that's also a similar idea. So now I just give you a little analysis to prove it works. Okay. So assumptions. It's a very simple theorem. Suppose the external potential is so strong convex, and uh, we have this uh, trap potential. You need this harmonic loss with the trap potential, so particles do not go too far away. All right. And you assume up to second derivative, you can grow, but uh, grow to actual some power q, where q is some positive constant. So part of image. For the indirected potential, we assume it's bounded Lipschitz with Lipschitz constant L and also has bounded second field. We also want this trap potential to, to be larger than this two times the Lipschitz constant. You may wonder what kind of assumption it is. These are exactly the assumption which guarantee the original particle system is a contraction. Well, without the without the Brownian motion term, you can prove under the same con concept. Uh, same uh, assumption, this uh, 
The difference between two particles with different initial data is a contraction. The L2 difference is a decay exponentially and this condition we have exponential decay. Of course, for this, this solution is boring because it, you have to add particle for the same point. Mm -hmm. But if you add a noisy term, you get non non trivial equilibrium, a non trivial uh, invariant measure. All right. mm -hmm. So that's the same assumption. A very simple notations for numerical error analysis. The analytic solution is xi, numerical one like for the tilde. Assume initial distribution of a numeric particle and a particle are the same distribution. Yeah. We also assume this Brownian motion term, numeric one and one are the same. Right? So this is our error. The error is just the two solutions between numerical uh, particle and analytic particle. We take L2 norm because these are vectors. Take L2 norm, take the expected value. And we also use, uh, if you want to compare with the mean field limit, we use a y size 2 times, uh, y size 2 distance. And actually, why we have this error, we automatically get the same error for, for this distance, just by definition. So this is the only theorem I'm going to show you. So it shows the error, which was defined, yeah, that's the expected value between numeric particle and analytic particle. Essentially, the error is square root, depth, square root of time step. So in that some sense, we have a Monte Carlo in time, all right? So this is really a Monte Carlo method in time. Each time, of course, n term summation is not the same as p term summation, but uh, cumulatively, and it's the same. Expect value is the same. So the error is like a Monte Carlo method, it's half order in time. Well, this shows you how the batch size plays a role in the error. The largest batch size is, of course, you reduce the error. But the key here is that this concept is independent of n. Right? Why? When for contraction map, it's also independent of t. So this means you only pick up your time step by your tolerance requirement, accuracy requirement. It has nothing to do with n. So this shows you that the combination cost is reduced by n. The time step uh, is not reduced by n. Okay, magically. And also, if you do y sub that to make, if you take a marginal one uh, uh, one marginal distribution. Uh, between the analytical multiplication and numerical one is also screwed time step. Okay. Well, the key lemma here is that, uh, all right, so what we do, we replace n order, n term summation into p term summation. So that's kind of truncation error, right? And of course, this is not zero. <laughs> However, if x if x is uh, independent of the random shuffling, the expected value of this difference is zero. All right, so you have it after you have done it many times, and this is the same. So expect value zero, which gives you some kind of consistency, and the variance, we can compute analytically the variance. So the variance is just uh, some function which depends on the kernel in the average sense. So it's all the one. The gamma is all the one. And now you see how the batch size affect your variance. <coughs> well, it's a, a, a reciprocal one of the batch size. Of course, when, but if you increase batch size, you reduce variance. If batch size is exactly n, there's no variance because that's the original deterministic algorithm. Right. Any question? The, the time step is just for changing the batches. You, you sell yeah, every time step you reshuffle. And then, then in between the time steps, you, you solve, you solve the all the e. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's the e. Here we just assume uh, we do we solve all the e exactly. We did not talk about the uh, error from time dissolution. So this is an error of uh, this random reshuffling mm -hmm. plus uh, time, time split. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, there's some stability results, which is kind of elementary. Basically, remember this gradient of v, v uh, the hash does not grow. Uh, that's actually called Q, so you get Q's movements of the uh, expected value of the analytic particle and numerical one are bounded. And also, uh, from time step Tn minus 1 to time T is uh, all the tau here. And this, uh, also, if you multiply this, uh, this difference, I forgot the parentheses here, by this kind of truncation error, it's also bounded by, uh, by essentially tau. 
Uh, all right, so if you did note, uh, Kasai MI is going to be the random division of batches at uh, this time step, this time. And this F, cardiograph M, M is is the sigma algebra with initial distribution, x zero i, and this bond in motion. Uh, this is a random shuffling at uh, this time, all right, for the previous time step. And so that's the sigma algebra generated by of course, the initial value of Brownian motion and uh, this random something, uh, random reshuffling. By the way, can we see a for the first version? Second version, we don't know how to prove it. Uh, which is the opposite of from stochastic range descent. In stochastic from machine learning, actually, they can prove easily the second version, but not the first one. But this dynamic system is different. And what? Uh, this first version is a random shuffle. Your m particle divided into small group, and each group is better interactively different group. The second one is a draw a p particle, doesn't be interactively back. Draw another p. That one we do not have to. We can prove the first version, random, random uh, permutation essentially. So we also get some uh, uh, er uh, consistent error, uh, conditional of uh, expected value. We are given the random shuffling at time step m minus 1, then I move from that time step to, to the next time step, that's all the tau. And also the square of this guy, uh, this uh, conditional expected value is also tau. And with that, and the rest is very easy, the proof is very easy. Essentially, it's the proof of, uh, like the proof of uh, numeric multiple ODE. With minimal little calculus because it's wrong emotion term, but it's minimal. So if you subtract analytic particle with numeric particle, this is the difference of two particles. So this is term from difference from this uh, external potential. So that's difference from the interacting potential. Of course, the interacting potential we have p term. So I replace p term by n terms, and then the, the rest, that's the truncation error from here. And this is we know it's all the top. So then, of course, uh, you we use the condition we have the broad V and the Lipschitz continuity on, on, on K, you get uh, this constant, all right, if you do L2 analysis. And this one, we, we, we have the lemma which shows this one is uh, essentially uh, all the top. So here we have used the, uh, we assume all particles, uh, molecular chaos, all right, you assume all particles are identical. So the n term summation is the same as one term. So we have to use that. Same assumption that you, you take for the new field limit. Well, the rest is very simple, it's ground one inequality. Because you have this exponent decay term, that's why we get this constant independent of time and also independent of n. All right. So the square is the order tau, so you take a square root, you get this. Well, by definition, once you have misestimated the y little distance, is the just a nat natural consequence. All right. So here is the diagram I want to show you. So now we have a method. It's not a, only all the n combination for n particle interaction system. You can also view this as a numeric method for the mean field limit. Because now this numeric particle has error to the analytic particle system. The error is all square tau, square times that. But from the, if you take a mean field limit from this one marginal uh, distribution to the uh, four plum equation, for example, if this are, another error is like one of square n, something like that. So if you add this to error, then you can view this particle, numeric particle, as an approximation of the mean field limit also. Right. So in that sense, we have asymptotic preserving particle systems. So not only a particle, but also for this mean field limit. And so this error, you know, why such a two distance? So that's the case when you have contraction map. If you don't have contraction, you get a constant which may depend on time, because you don't have exponent decay time. So you do ground where you get the exponent decay time. But again, this C is independent of n. All right, so still the cost uh, is reduced from n to n squared to n to n. All right, so now I just, uh, of course, uh, we have assumptions on the uh, theorem, but I want to compute uh, for, for the other one general potential. I just uh, do some numerical experiments. So here, for example. Question about the theorem. So if you make, um, you make a molecular chaos assumption? Yeah, we need that, uh, yes. The final uh, for finite m, yeah. Well, well, our analysis is for particles, so fixed m, right? But here we we we, we assume one chaos. Yeah. 
So the n term summations is becoming one term summations because they're all independent. Well, with molecular assumption, then you can take a uh, mean field limit, then you get this kind of thing. You do just a triangle, and you add this to error. So it's not only method for the particle, but also method for n large. For n large, it's a method for the mean field limit. How does uh, the constant go to here in this point? It's e to the power, e to the power t. Like standard, if you do in your right. But that's not our fault. Because no, no, no. given ODE, <laughs> given any ODE, it's not contraction. There is always an error. You're always there, yeah. There's always an error. So, that. Yeah, that's the interesting error. And that's the with our method. And that's the one with our method. Yeah. Could you, for instance, bring it down to polynomial code? Well, you, you can do uh, something. Yeah, like you may do hypercost symmetry, I don't know. If you do, we just do the most elementary okay. one. Because uh, you know, when you begin yeah. some stuff, uh, you, you, you do the. Easiest. Let the other guys do the, the hard one. There are a lot of people who have, can improve this theorem, I'm sure, yeah. for more general potential or whatever. <laughs> so, so I, I tried this particle system, which is a sort of regularized uh, coolant, right? We add one here, so it never becomes singular. Uh, so this, this is a trap potential, okay, for harmonic oscillator. So B equals zero, then we do not have trap potential. So the assumption theorem is not satisfied. So with B, beta equals 0, 1, you always get the same uh, error as the square root, of the square root of time step. But of course, this, this error, if it's contraction, that error, of course, is almost constant in time, but it's not contracting the error growing in time. Just as a standard OD solver, you have this also. All right, now I have all these different applications, depend, depend on your background. As I said, the system arises everywhere. So I'm going to select a few. So yeah, the first one is called random matrix theory. If you want to compute the eigenvalues of the random matrix theory, you can write it as a dyson brown emotion. And the charge of particles on sphere is so-called Thomson's problem, where you have essentially do brown emotion on sphere. Then uh, from the field game, you can do stochastic dynamics of wells, opinion dynamics, that's what the item tell you to do. Also in data science, you can use this kind of algorithm with data cluster clusterings. For example, something called a stochastic block model where you want to separate a mixture of people from different backgrounds due to their connectivity. Right. Random graph series also related. Also, you can reorder the sparse matrix. So first one is sort of Dyson brown emotion. If you want to compute the eigenvalues of a uh, Hamid matrix value of the Einstein Gulenbeck process, then this J's eigenvalue of such matrix Certified this particle system, and if you read the, the book of Terry, Terry Tao and so on, maybe Xiao. So then you see here, this is the kind of like trap potential when beta positive. And you have very singular indirecting potential. It's very singular, it's 1 of x minus 1, right? Then you have this brown emotion. And this, this system has a mean field limit, which is uh, something like that. Whereas U here is the constant pi times uh, Hilbert transform of rho, right? It turns out if beta equals 1, this analytic solution to this mean field limit, that's given here. And if you send it to infinity, you get the invariant measure of global equilibrium, which is a, has shape of half of the circle. All right. So we have these two different versions of random bands. So instead of what do we just, uh, we use p equals 2, so you only this all the add summation, we just add another, we randomly select another particle and do that with another particle. All right? So this is the first version, uh, this is the random permutation. This is the initial data, and this is global equilibrium, and this is some in the, uh, intermediate time. So this, this is with, uh, without replacement, this is with replacement, as you can see. You suggest they give a comparable result. And not only at the beginning when we developed this, we saw this part only works for invariant measure. But turns out, and also proved by the theorem, it also works for dynamic problem. So as you can see, we can capture the dynamics. Well, this charge of particles on sphere is this classical Thomson's problem, where you try to determine if you have any electrons on sphere. All right? And A is very large. Uh, this is something called a spherical crystals, um, and n go to infinity, the, you get a sort of a distribution of particles, which is the minimizer of uh, this energy. But this kernel is come from coolant interaction. Right. 
So it takes sort of over damped limit, you have this uh, sort of a uh, long term kind of equation where this f is cooler in direction, all right, and they project the sphere. And this is a Brownian motion term. All right. So it's a indirect particle on our sphere. So our algorithm is very simple. We just uh, do coolant, we randomly pick up another particle, we only do coolant with another particle. And that said, we can do that analytically. So this is a coolant interaction, which is considered long range. So our algorithm works for long range interaction. So essentially, you just take another particle, you do coolant with the other particle, and you can do this analytically. So remove stiffness. So after you have done it for n particles, you divide by the length of the particle, so they are in our unit sphere. So it's two step algorithm. Okay, it takes uh, no time to finish. And so this equilibrium here, yeah, you see the energy decay. So this is uh, when you have uh, 60 particles, this is when you have uh, 800 particles. You see you get a uniform distribution. So that's, uh, that's the invariant measure. Well, this is something, uh, it's a model from the field game, model by Pierre de Gaulle and Oliver Christian Winkhofer. Uh, where they have, uh, if you consider n market agents with two attributes, so like this economic configuration xi and the wealth is yj, so they're coupled by the second order particle system, all right, with very complicated uh, interacting functions, and also non-replicative noise. So the algorithm firstly works on long range. This is going to be very long range interaction. Second, not only that works for additive noise, but also for monetary noise. So we're going to choose phi such that it's really long range. I'm going to choose phi here is one half square, which means the interaction grows in space. It's not physical, but uh, that's what this model is. All right. So you know what's for potential? That's a linear function of distance, very long range, and the more more quicker noise. So this initial data and this is a quicker solution, and we will get it right. Uh, this is what I can like, like to do, opinion dynamics, all right? So person I is going to spread some rumor to person or the other persons, all right? And so it's, normal, it's global interaction. The phi is called the interaction fun influence functions. So our method is not only a new numerical method, it's also a new model. Because what we do is instead of you pass rumor, you run to another person and he does it. Uh, I'm an old time guy, I do not use uh, it's more than uh, social media, but it's pretty uh, the whole world knows. I speak to someone and he talks to someone else. All right? So this is our model, random binary model for particle i. It talk randomly to particle person theta and that's it. With some probably some noise. So it's binary communication. So this is uh, with five, if the correct is function, so with some initial data, you get uh, four different opinions, four consensus consensus. This is icons, the original model, you get four opinions. In our model, actually, we get the same four opinions, but there's also some similarity. It's only always one guy in the society who have a different opinion. Half society want to go for Brexit, the other one, no Brexit. Some guy who said, well, I want to do something. <laughs> in our model. This is without probability mode, with probability mode you get some fluctuations, but essentially it's similar. The last one is from data science, which is another populous area. In data science, sometimes you want to, for example here, uh, English speakers, you have a more chance of a connect by WhatsApp. With probably P, you are connected by WhatsApp, for example. Uh, Spanish people, uh, French people, and it was probably Q that he talked to someone who speak uh, English. Usually, P is bigger than Q, all right? And you have started with a random mixture, and you want to separate them. So this is a spectral gap here. And there's a lot of reasons to do that for eBay, for example, they want to understand the customer happy things like that. So it's also related to uh, random, random growth. So you can simulate that by a linear sort of uh, opinion dynamics here, where I put a constant matrix by the random matrix called an adjacent matrix using the language of uh, random graphs. So AIJ is the, uh, a constant graph uh, matrix. It's defined like this. It's Bernoulli, Bernoulli distribution. 
So if you are from the same cluster, if all English speakers with prop P you are, you are connected by say uh, WhatsApp. So with prop P you are connected with prop Y minus T you're not, you're not. And so I put the AIJ equals one with probability P, AIJ equals zero with probability Y minus P. Okay? And if you are different if you speak a different language, then with probably Q, you are sort of connected by WhatsApp. So I put, in that case, I put AID to be 1 with, with probably Q and 0 with probably 1 minus Q. Then I put this constant beta between P and Q. So some, some things are either positive, is contractive, or if it's negative, it's repulsive. It's a very simple model. Okay. All right, so initially I have this three different spot, uh, spots, English speaker, French speaker, and I don't know, yeah, Italian maybe. Yeah. So you have uh, this color, if you are same group, it's a yellow, a different group, it's uh, blue. All right, so initially it's completely mixed, completely mixed. So these are two different probabilities. Uh, initially it's a completely mixed, after some time you see it's separated into three different groups, and uh, there's still some guys in between, not completely separate, but they belong so longer time, then you see they are completely separate, three different groups. You can also do something called a reordering sparse matrix. I mean, people love start sparse matrix. You can do a data or linear algebra. It will save a lot of memory. But you like it better if it's both sparse and banded. And if you do something like scholastic decomposition, IO decomposition is banded, you only have to treat the non-zero entries near the, near the band, uh, away from it. So this uh, in the community combinatorics, okay, people do that like it's empty hard this problem actually, <laughs> but we can do it in, in a simple way by this uh, particle system. So we just start with some uh, I don't know what this is, just some ma random matrix from MATLAB has this name, All right? It's a, it's a sparse matrix, and we want to align this sparse all the non-zero entries along the diagonal as close as possible. So this is the initial matrix from MATLAB, as you see the yellow, yellows are the non-zero entries. So they are kind of uh, spread out everywhere, all right? So we run this algorithm, this, this particle system, and uh, after some time, very soon actually, exponentially fast, they are mostly are along this diagonal, all right? And also this algorithm, the, the entries with similar size can group together. So you see these blocks with a larger AIJ than those with smaller AIJ. So the AIJ is with similar magnitude to try to group together. Very similar like, like this uh, clustering uh, algorithm. So algorithm is really simple. It's not optimal. It's not as the, the band, the, the, the whistle band is a little bit larger than what you do with the combinatorial algorithm. But this is uh, insanely simple, this algorithm. It's like you just multiply this vector by matrix. You do that. With this random, with random sampling, of course, you only multiply very few rows of columns of matrix, all right, instead of the n by n matrix. OK, so I think people are hungry. Uh, so just conclusion. And basically, we have a very simple algorithm for a very general interactive particle system. Which allows to reduce us to from n to power j, with j bigger than one, any integer to all the n. Very simple way, all right. And we can prove under certain assumptions on the potentials for the first version. This one, uh, this random shuffling, we can prove we get error, which is a half order in time, time step, but the uh, independent of the size of the particle n, all right. and also uniform in time also. Then, of course, we apply to everywhere you can imagine. I mean, it's only small selection, but keep a, keep a time. Can you try this? Can you try that? A lot of that. And so, uh, I think it's a, it's a very simple way to do it. It's more like a, a fast monocle is for genius, but this one, everybody can do it. <laughs> so, I hope people will use it. All right. Of course, there are many questions you can ask, both theoretically and numerically. Numeric so, for that, I stop. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. 
So um, no, if you if at each step you you, you start uh, choosing uh, uh, a batch of interacting particles uh, for each um, uh, random choice, you are going to destroy this. Thing. I think that's okay because we draw it uh, without bias. You, you want we draw uh, this random shuffling. It's completely uniform distribution, right? Yeah. So it's yeah. it's the expectation. It's the expected value of the um, when you average over over uh, choices of your random batches. Yes. The, the average uh, the average density is going to be symmetric in x one x two x n. But mm -hmm. each individual configuration may not be symmetric. Uh, yes, but it, it takes time average, then I think it's okay. Oh, if you average in time. Yeah, well, we do average in time, of course. Right? Otherwise, you, this is more recovery in time. Mm -hmm. right? So the expected value is taking over some time. Mm -hmm. Well, what you ask actually is the following. What you try to ask is, well, you remember this diagram. I think you are trying to prove it. Uh, What we proved, uh, where is this uh, diagram? It's kind of an AP diagram. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Of course, we, we prove this goes to that, and that goes to that, and there's no problem, right? Yeah. What you try to prove is it could be run this way. You only pass me a few limit by in this direction, right? Yes. That's what you ask. Exactly. I think it's correct, but uh, what we, we prove, we prove. If they are indistinguishable, this converts to that with a weight or the tau, a square tau. Then from here to here is the one over n. So it works. But of course, if you watch and prove that, uh, here, I think you need to take time average. Then you can, I think you run this assumption here. So the, the method, as you explained it, is just for space homogeneous. It's the time that no needs and the. This is all the E. This is all the E. Okay. There's no space. Okay. So, no, 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 that, that I understand. So when you go very Monte Carlo, you still can do the same thing at Monte Carlo to put their vectors of the free motion and then the collision, right? No, we, we're not, I'm not solving Boltzmann. I'm solving particles. There's no space. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, yeah, that you could probably very good sometimes splitting algorithm to put that vector. Well, we do have splitting. Uh, well, first, this already time, I have time have to shuffle. Then uh, for coolant, we do type splitting. Uh, we, if you only interact with one more guy on coolant, we do something so this part can be solved analytically. Then we, we separate this, the other two terms from this step. Okay. If you do coolant, well, first order system, second order is not true actually. For first order system, if you do coolant with one more guy, you can do that analytically. So let me ask you some other question. You said you needed to be a Lipschitz operator. Which is true, for instance, for Maxwell molecules. That way it works for yeah, yeah. opinion for, for analysis proof. as well. It's when you have a collision cross section. But you could replace that, for instance, with this the kind of uh, approach of doing um, a, a Helder operator plus some other condition that, that actually gives an invariant region. I, I think uh, you can certainly improve. Uh, you, okay. you can improve this theorem. I mean, I'm sure there are many people here who are able to do it. Yeah. Uh, I can, I don't know, at least more than a handful of people who can improve this. I am not surprised. But, uh, yeah, but in your market, of course, you see, it works for coolant, even for very, very singular, very crazy, very crazy interaction potential, like 1 of x minus y, right? Yeah. And this uh, Dyson, even for this, uh, this kind of. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Can I see, does the energy become noisy or, or you can redundant? You have a noise because it's more than common. That's so, yeah. Yeah, no, 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 but how does it compare with the classical Monte Carlo? It's not classical. I don't know what is the classical Monte Carlo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> this, you must compare it this is the Monte Carlo. This is the Monte Carlo in time, right? Yeah, no, no, no. I'm yeah. saying with the, with the bird scheme, sorry. With that I, don't, I don't know what the. Well, of course, the Nambuzi algorithm for binary interaction is very similar to this. Okay, that, okay. But they are solving Boltzmann, they compare with Boltzmann. I am solving part of the system. Mm -hmm. yeah. But for the angle infinity, I am also solving, yeah, solving yeah, the yeah, yeah, field. You know, for, for, if you are going to start with a system that corresponds to maximum molecules, that is proven to, be, to have molecular fields. Yeah, so yeah, you yeah. can really compare with almost everything. That's all, I, all I'm saying is, does it improve a little bit the classical form of doing all the color? Yes. Maybe you are proposing to do this. Um, 
this gradient kind of. Uh, you can do that for particles. My message is that you can do what the uh, no, Bobby Wolf and them do, what they do for yeah. in the DSMC for. You can do that similar idea for particles with only two randomly chosen. So the idea is okay, if you have n term, you randomly choose two particles that are being right. That's enough. <laughs> Over time, you, everybody has been right with that. But we make cells in a Burton method. But this is much simpler than that. There's no cell because this is, uh, we are solving OGE. Yeah, it's not only one step. Yeah, it's one step. Yeah, it's no next. Thank you.